On the workbench, I have a TAC Nostalgic system. This is a double cassette with a record player and a three disc CD changer. And this unit, well, we'll figure it out. It's been dropped and I don't know whether I'm going to be able to solve this one, but let's take a look and see. A neighbor brought me this piece of crap. Okay, I thought it was a crossy, but you know, it's it's a TIAC. Gosh darn. Um, TIAC used to be a brand that we all associated with as being a great brand. Um, of course, TIAC was the consumer version of Tascam, which was the, the professional version that found itself in many recording studios making professional analog and digital recording equipment. And the TIAC brand was always looked at as high-end consumer audio gear. And I've got some good TIAC cassette decks that are great. And then this comes out. This is the new TIAC, which is not TIAC. It's just in name only. The TIAC Nostalgia GF680. Wonderful piece of junk. It's got in the top here it's got a record player. Nostalgia. <laughs> yeah. All right. And you know that this is not made in Montebello, California. This is uh, most certainly coming out of PRC. Let's take a look down at the back here. Because this is going to make you guys laugh. What does that say? It says... The TIAC Compact Hi-Fi Stereo System. Tokyo, Japan, right? Yeah, right. This thing's really made in Japan. I, I really believe that, but they're so proud because they got Tokyo, Japan on here, which would fool anybody who didn't have their reading glasses on. But when you look down here, of course, it's not made in Japan. It's made in China. What the hell? What the hell are they trying to pull here? Are they trying to fool people? People see this and they say, this, oh, this is Japanese made. This is a high quality machine. Um, yeah, sure it is. Complained on this is the tape decks go slow. So, <laughs> a joke. let's pull the back off this thing and take a look. Let's just see what the heck is inside this thing because I guarantee you it's not going to be much. Actually, it's real wood though, so give that, give them credit for that. It's going to be particle board, but at least it's not plastic. Now, the reason the person that owns this wants to fix it is that it has sentimental value to them. To me, sentimental value in a piece of equipment is like, a, you know, a 1940s Marconi radio or a 1953 Pi radio that I just fixed. That may have had sentimental value to somebody, but it's, now it's mine. But, you know, something old, vintage, an antique. An antique has sentimental value. Maybe it was handed down from a grandparent or something, right? Um... This is modern garbage, and uh, you don't get attached to this modern garbage because it doesn't last. Now, I may be totally wrong. I may open this thing up and actually find that it's made quite well. I won't know until I open it up. I'm not expecting it to be much. I'm expecting it to be mostly an empty box and some plastic crap on the front stuck to a wooden particle board cabinet with a particle board back. Try not to laugh too hard as I remove the last screw.
Are we ready? I know the suspense is killing you guys, right? Voila. There you go. That's what's in here. Actually, it's got more in it than I thought it was going to have, to tell you the truth. I wasn't expecting to see a full big circuit board here on a chassis, but I guess it's got a, it's got a three disc CD changer in here, so it's going to have a few things. Let's um, plug this thing in and see what it's doing. So we'll start by turning this piece of junk on and see what it receives. Volume. Um, well, it's picking up my little FM broadcast from my test transmitter. Let's see how the AM works. I'll just turn the AM transmitter on. Might as well test the radio out first. So, AM. That's down. And I'm on 1440. Okay, there, that works. So the AM radio part works. And the FM part. FM mode, mono, and stereo. That works. Okay, what else do we have on this thing? Uh, we have a CD player. Let's try. Let's open up the CD player. Hopefully it wasn't transported with this in it. Oh! My God, look at how dirty this thing is. Let's do something about that before I even proceed. Now, I know some wise guy is going to make some crack because I always have before about using an air compressor and how much moisture I'm putting into this. Uh, I have a dryer. I have a desiccant uh, dryer on my air compressor. So I'm not going to be blowing moisture in here. This uh, compressor came out of service where there was dryer already on it. Okay, I got a little bit of dust out of there now. We'll load up a CD. Disc one. Okay, the disc one button doesn't click. So that's a problem. Disc one doesn't click. It should still find disc number one when it doesn't find anything in the other two, but that switch doesn't work. There, now to go to disc number one. We'll see if it reads. That looks like that's working. It almost sounds like there's only one speaker too. Both speakers are working, but one sounds weaker than the other. I'm just wondering if there's a balance control on here. CD player is working. Oh, we gotta stop it, I guess, first. Seems like that belt is a little bit. Uh... I 
think it needs a new belt in the open close mechanism. CD player appears to work. That's the number one button. You can hear these ones clicking. Right, but one is broken, so I'll have to address that. Let's check the cassette deck next. I'll find a tape. Yeah, I got a tape here with my 440 hertz tone on it. Now what do we got here? We've got record play. I got playback. Look in here first and see how dirty the heads are on this. Actually, they're not. The heads don't look dirty. The heads look actually quite clean. Oh, you guys are going to love this when I show you the inside of this thing. Cheap. This is cheap, cheap, cheap. Utter garbage. Okay, play. Oh, uh, tape. sounds like my tape's been recorded over, doesn't it? At a different frequency. Let's uh, get something to check that speed. According to the scope, coming in at 454, so it's a little high. It should be 440. We'll check the speed of the other deck. I believe they're both controlled off the same motor on this one anyway, so they're both going to be the same. I have to plug my headphone jack in here to measure it, but yeah, 450, uh, 4, 448, 454, you can see it's not perfect, it's a little bit wavering a bit. Though it doesn't sound bad, but it is a little high. Now I can use my guitar tuner as well to look at this and get exactly the same uh, results from that. I would say that I have a bad probe here. Brand new probe. Look at that. Cheap. Cheap Chinese stuff. I guess that's the end of the recording. You know, somebody warned me about these probes that came with this thing. But 451 is a little too high. Yeah, it's a little fast. I'm going to turn this thing around and see if I can adjust the speed. There's a speed control. There should be a speed control back there on the board somewhere, I would think. Let's take a look for it. And there is a speed adjustment in there. There's probably two of them. thinking probably that that's one of them is there. I'm sure that's probably one of these is a high speed adjustment. And this one here is probably the regular adjustment here. And if I tweak this, we can see that. So we're just going to set that. I'm just going to plug the scope back in. And I'll set that to exactly 440. Well, that's if my tone doesn't go away. Okay. Let's take a look at that signal. I'm going to set that to exactly 440, which I'm, I'm pretty close there. I've got pretty good ear. I'm at 441. Forty point four three. Close enough. That's sounding a little better. Yes, there's 
Keep it a while and flutter. Take, we'll take a look inside this thing. Let me just get a light in the back of this thing. Turn that noise down so you guys don't have to listen to that. I have to listen to that racket. Okay. I turn on my work light here. Okay. Now you guys can see exactly what's inside this thing. Uh, in the back here, of course, it's a cheap mechanism. It's got plastic gears in here. Right. Although there's a lot of torque. The belts aren't worn out or anything. There's a lot of torque in here. What about all these pulleys? Yeah, there's a fair bit of torque on them too. Yeah, I think the belts are okay. The speed was off a bit, so brought that back more to where it belongs. Since it's a single motor deck, I'm not too worried about the high speed dubbing one because it could be a bit off, it doesn't matter. Both the decks are driven from the same motor so it really wouldn't matter if the speed was a bit off on the high speed dubbing. I don't think too many people dub cassettes these days anyway. They just listen to them. But that's uh, got the tape speed taken care of. See how cheap this thing is. Look at the cabinet. It's like the wood cabinet's not even uh, not even glued together properly. I have to put some glue on that. Try and support that up a bit more. This button here is kind of bunged. Check out the quality of the the cassette deck in here. You notice that the the head actually has a bit of wear on it. I can actually even hook my fingernail on there. I don't know if these come off the front. They probably don't on this. It's too cheap. Uh, check out the erase head. Doesn't look like this tape. This thing's ever had a tape recorded on it because the amount of dust that's on that erase head, which in this case is just a fixed magnet. You can see the dust on there. I don't think this thing's ever recorded. Probably never has, but yet never ever will either. But uh, what they're doing on this, I'll put this thing in record mode so you guys can get a laugh as to what it does. So I'm gonna pull the little tab up here. Where is it? I put the record button down. You see what it's doing here? When I push record, it just pops that magnet in place and that magnet is erasing the tape. That is about the uh, that is about the cheapest way to record. That's something like a, a portable tape recorder would do. Record had the power off. That's why it wasn't turning. But that's the uh, the record side. The other side, of course, is just a playback only deck. And the head on this one looks to be a little bit worn too. It's not in really, really bad shape, but I can see some wear. You can probably see it here on the on the record playhead. Or in this case, it's just a playhead because as we can see from all the dust on there, that thing's never done any recording. Let's take a look on the other side, over on this side here. You can see there's some wear on this head as well. We're right there. There we go. This is the auto stop mechanism. When that tape gets tight, it pushes this little lever down. And when that little lever gets pushed down, it stops the tape. If I press this lever, Like that. So when the tape ends, and the tape gets tight, it just pushes this lever down. And that's what trips the auto shut off. The same on this side here. That's how the unreliable auto stop works on these cheap machines. It's just a little lever that triggers a little cam or a little a, a little 
lever that engages into a, a, a it's a little catch on the side of the flywheel and it pushes it in front of this catch and when the, when the flywheel is turning it hits the lever and flips it and that releases the mechanism um, it's about as cheap as you can get but then again this is about as cheap as you can get oh no my original Star Wars hacked up record from 1976 1977 my original Star Wars record it was attacked by the Klingons the Klingons took a bite out of my record that kind of sucks um, it was nicely stored and it fell when one of my kids that are old enough to know better than slamming doors was having a, a little dispute and decided to slam the door and turn the door inside out and uh, it fell down off the shelf it was sitting up over on over top of my monitor and I found it on the floor I didn't even look at it until I pulled it out of the sleeve and I guess it hit in just such a place here it bent and broke my record I hope my Monty Python records okay we'll try that one yeah no Klingon attacks on Monty let's see how Monty sounds on this fine piece of okay what the heck am I doing with this thing um, the button on the front says auxiliary phono which is which interesting okay well I guess we'll just try it in that mode that says auxiliary and see whether there's any sound of course not, because the needle's falling off of it. There. Now the needle's popped back in. Oh, wonderful! Good. Well, I have this large quantity of string, 122,000 miles of it to be exact. Ah! Why is someone put an elastic band around here? What a cheap turntable. My God, I thought that I thought that classic wooden turntable that was sent to me a couple years ago from Amazon to review. You know the one with the solid wooden base, but the really cheap turntable with a tone arm that weighs about 10 grams? Well, I think this is the same turntable on this thing. It's um Um Kind of looks like it's kind of falling out of here. What is this thing dropped? I have a feeling that this thing was dropped. You know what? I have a feeling that this thing was dropped. I mean, that it shouldn't lift out like that. Huh. Let's see if this thing will play. Not bothering to clean the record for this thing. It ain't worth it. Thanks to British Airways. Crafted. Well worn classical hand tool jokes. It has been specially designed to sit at the back of your record collection amongst the old Frank Sinatra albums to be brought out and split up when you get divorced. Any complaints about the humorous quality of this album should be addressed to British Airways, Ingram's Drive, Redditch. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think we have a problem here. I think this tone arm is what we call foobar. And for those of you unaware of the term, it means fucked up beyond any repair. I don't think that that's supposed to do that. I'm quite certain that that... I'm quite certain that the record's not supposed to rub on here either, but uh, when I put the needle on... Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to do much on this thing. There's not even an adjustment on this thing for, for... I think it's hitting the... 
for a string at just the right length. For what? Affordable. Yeah, see? Look at it lifting up at the back, right? I think this is a lost cause. I got news for the guy that brought me this thing here. Um, the tape deck works, the CD player works, um, the turntable, uh, that's a lost cause. It's been, this has been, I mean, looking at this cabinet, this thing has been dropped or something. And it's, it's shot. It's broken. It's beyond repair. I can't see any way I can fix this stupid uh, tone arm. I'll turn it around and take a look. Maybe I can take the turn table out of this thing. But uh, I, I don't hold any hope that I'm going to be able to fix that thing. I think this thing is just too far gone. Yeah, you can see this thing's definitely been dropped. That's all broken. I mean, that part can probably be repaired. But the uh, tone arm itself has got a problem. This has got to be the cheapest turntable I've ever seen, by the way. Check this out. Check out the quality of this thing. Oops. That's good for the needle. <laughs> Not that it matters. Um, this is the underside of this piece of just piece of crap. It's a it's, yeah, it's a belt drive. Big deal. It's plastic. It's garbage. Just just utter garbage. But this looks like it's kind of buggered up. I'm just gonna take a, take a look at this and see whether I can if there's any hope of making this thing work. Looking at the back side of this tone arm, I think that one time there used to be a shaft going through here which adjusted the, the weight. There's a spring underneath here. I have a feeling that that's been broken off, probably when it got dropped. I see there's pieces of plastic in the back here too. Some more plastic over here. See there's pieces that have been broken off of this thing. I'm pretty sure this unit has been, has been dropped or fallen over or something. I wonder if there's any way I can remove this toner. I'll just look underneath there, see if there's any damage. It's not broken, like it's not broken off, but it just seems sloppy. See, this just seems to have a lot of play in here. There's a spring underneath this thing as well. I wonder if I can just take this apart. There's a pin in there. I don't know if that pin will push through or not. Let's try and see. This pin will actually push through here. Ah, it will. That pin will push through there. So let's just take the pin out. Take the arm apart. I want to see what's in here. See how loose this is? There's no way I think that thing should be as loose as it is. And I don't think there is an adjustment on this. I don't think there was anything broken off the back. Some of them will have an adjustment in here with a screw that will adjust the tension on that spring. This one's fixed. I don't think there is any adjustment on this. This this tone arm just just hangs the weight that it hangs. It's uh, it really doesn't get much cheaper than this, does it? I don't see any plastic that's broken here, other than the fact that this is this is so floppy. Like literally this is just a pin that goes through here and it goes through the arm and it goes through that center piece, that, that bracket, and uh, secures it to the uh, the pivot. I mean it's just, there's just nothing to this thing. I mean, I've seen cheap before but this, this just, just takes the bloody cake. 
I don't think I've ever seen anything this cheap. This is just a, a pin that slides through from this side. Well, I guess it goes through from this way. One side's got a like a a beveled edge on it to grip to lock it in place. So this, the pin goes through. We line it up so that it's lined up with the hole inside, like that. Put the pin through to the other side. Cheapest, it's the cheapest tone arm I've ever seen. I mean, just look at the play on this thing. How would you like to drag that needle across your records? Like, I wouldn't even play that old Star Wars record as beat up and broken as it is on this thing. I have a feeling that this might, might be supposed to be not quite as much a slack here. I mean, this thing has no anti-skating whatsoever, and the little, the little catch that normally goes on top here that would lock the torn arm in place, well, that's a piece of plastic, I'm sure, that I picked up from inside it that was broken. Oh, well. Let's just reinstall this thing and see if I've made any difference. There's not a heck of a lot I can do to this thing because it's just an incredible piece of junk. One thing I will do is, I'm going to re-glue this. I'm just waiting for my hot glue gun to warm up, or hot snot as, uh, as some like to call it. We'll hot snot this back in place, and hopefully that will uh, support it a little bit better. I don't see any on this side. Uh, there might have been one that was supposed to be over here. I'm, I'm thinking there was probably supposed to be another one of these things over here for that, that, that uh, spring to sit in. Um, I don't see it though, it's not inside. It's not inside the unit. So I don't know where it is. But I get a feeling that there was supposed to be another one of these over here. Sitting in one of these holes, maybe that one. To support the back side of the turntable. Maybe that's why, that's probably why it bounces around like it does. Is that there's a you see here, there's there's three support points. This is a latch. The other latch goes on this side, which goes through that other one. It's the, the cut one. And I think there's another one over here that's missing, and that's probably part of the problem. That's why this thing it's why it's bouncing around. It's hitting the bottom. Maybe I have to find something I can support that with to hold this in place. That might solve some of the problems. And this may be the answer. I'm going to glue this washer on the bottom here. Because if we notice this, this is about the same depth. If we notice the other one here, this is about the same depth as the, the wood itself. Right when that sits in here, that's about the same depth. A little lower, but you know, I think maybe that might help. I'm going to glue this thing to the bottom of the cabinet here, on the bottom side here, to uh, provide some support. Glue gun is hot now, so let's put some glue on here. We'll fix this one. It's broken, as you can see. We'll just stick some hot glue in there. And stick that back in place. That'll certainly hold that in place. I'll do the same thing underneath here. I'm going to put some glue on the cabinet here. And then I'll stick this washer on the bottom here.
I know people are going to say, everyone says nasty things about this glue, but you know, it does have one strength for it. And that is, it's really strong stuff. But two, it's really quite easy to work with. I mean, it dries almost immediately as soon as it cools down. And it's strong, right? See, I can't even push that through now. So it's fast. It sets up instantly, pretty much, because as soon as it cools down, it's set, and it's strong. It's easy to work with. You know, you're not mixing epoxies or anything. You're not dealing with wood glue, having to wait for it to, you know, I should probably put some more. Maybe I'll put some more here to fix the cabinet up here. Two places where the cabinet's been separated from, from, the, from the face down here and on the front here. So if I can get in here with the glue gun, which I'm sure I can, I can probably get some glue in here onto this tab. Looks like it was hot glued to begin with, doesn't it? Put some glue in there, put some glue along this tab here, and then just push the thing back together if you can. Oh, this piece is broken on the front as well. Hold that for a few seconds until it sets up. And there you go. Instant repair. Try that with regular wood glue. See, if Red Green had power at the lodge there, he'd be using hot glue instead of duct tape for fixing everything. Okay, let's see if I can get that turntable to drop in here. I'm gonna slide this one in first. And then drop the other ones down in place, like that. Turn the catches to latch it in place. That one. And this one over here. I got a couple plugs to plug in back here. So I've got two power cords to put in. They go into this uh, turntable. One plugs in here. I think that's one. And the other one is next to it, which is here. Okay, let's uh, try this thing out. See if it works any better than the last time around. Okay, for the moment of truth, I'm gonna put on my secondhand store special, my Jan Ackerman LP, and see if this will play. Can't play this for any length of time because uh, I don't want to get hit with copyright, so I'll, I'll shut the camera off here, but I'm gonna let it play and see whether this thing actually will play through. So I'll put the camera on and off from time to time as this playing here, just so I'm going to listen to it for a bit. Well, it's been playing for a few minutes here. As you can see, this record's got a warp to it, too. It's not in perfect shape, but uh, actually it's got quite a warp to it. Maybe that's the turntable that's warped, anyway. That seems to be playing okay. I mean, I'm surprised this thing even plays anything, considering the damage to that tone arm. I'm probably, just, I'm probably taking about a thousand plays off this record, just letting this thing play through here. But I'm gonna let it play through the full side and see if it'll play it all the way through. See, I'm picking something relatively obscure that hopefully there won't be any uh, copyright strikes on this, and I'm also talking over it while it's playing. But as you can hear, it seems to be playing okay. As I say, this thing is a very cheap uh, turntable, very cheap system, so hopefully the person that owns this thing will appreciate the effort I put into this. Uh, I can't even charge them for anything because if I charge them to fix this thing, um, you know, I'm going to be uh, married to it. And Well, the last thing I want to do is have to deal with this thing again. So this is kind of just a favor and uh, any money I make will be from you guys watching this. So watch it up. Watch this stuff up because that's how I make my money is from the views. And if you guys are, are so cheap that you can't watch my ads, I really would appreciate 
if you kick me something back either on PayPal or uh, Patreon just to cover my my efforts here. I know some of you don't like to you watch ads and that's fine as long as you uh, you know kick something my way then go ahead and block them but uh, you know this is how I uh, that's that's how I fund the channel is through donations and through uh, my advertising sponsorship that's placed by Google. We're going to continue to monitor this thing for a bit and see how it works. Oh, I just love that sound of a ceramic cartridge. Ugh. Anyway, um, hey, that's it. I'm done with this thing. It's played the side of the record without skipping, uh, without skating, and I'm done. I'm not putting any more time. I'm not putting any more energy into this thing because, as I say, this thing's a piece of junk. It's been trashed. Hey, at least now it's not falling apart. At least now the cabinet's back together and the turntable sits level, it doesn't drag. But uh, it's not a high end, it's a low end, comparable to the Crossleys out there, and well, we know how wonderful those things are. That's it. Thanks for watching. I'm not even gonna bother, right? I mean, this, this button's not working, but I'm not even gonna bother with that because this thing just isn't worth putting anything into, so I'm not going to worry about it.